So I grew up in a family of lovable tightwads. And I'll tell you, when you grow up in a family of cheapskates, you better be prepared to be embarrassed about your clothes. Most of my clothes came from this dingy discount store. And if they didn't come from a dingy discount store, they came from my mother's sewing machine. So I became a little Miss Bossy Pants about my pants. <laughs> I was embarrassed by the clothes I wore when I was a kid. And I just wanted to have clothes with labels in them. Like all the other kids, you know, granimals, <laughs> clothes that matched, clothes that had labels. So my mother, she used to stretch a dollar by making most of the clothes that I wore. And my mother was pretty talented. She was so thrifty and, and so talented that she could make just about anything you could imagine until one day, thrifty and talented crossed paths and she made the unimaginable. <laughs> Homemade underpants. <laughs> Scouts on her. And it, it got worse than that because instead of putting these homemade underpants in the drawers with our other clean laundry, she put them in our Easter baskets. <laughs> yeah, so you all thought your families were thrifty, right? They don't hold a candle to my family. So she put them in our Easter baskets in lieu of the chocolate bunnies that we were expecting. And my mother was thrifty, but she was also thoughtful. So she explained to us, that the chocolate bunnies would give us pimples because we'd be teenagers soon. So she was doing us a favor by slipping underpants in our Easter baskets. And you know, when you think about it, pimples only last a couple days, but a humiliating underpants story lasts a lifetime. So my mother, she was going for the long game because that's what thrifty people do. And my father, he was able to retire early because all the money they saved on chocolate and Clearasil. <laughs> So sometimes I would grow faster than my mother's Kenmore sewing machine could keep up. And in those instances, we would go shopping at a real store. But instead of going to the mall like all the normal people did, we went to this dingy discount store in suburban Philadelphia. It was called Artie's. Anybody remember Artie's? Okay. So <laughs> Artie's was the mother of all discount stores. It was before TJ Maxx, before Marshalls, before any of those stores. And the things at Artie's were dirt cheap. And they all had their labels cut out of them because they were, as my mother would say, seconds. So back in the day, in the 80s and the 70s, if you got your clothes from a department store, it would come with a sticker on it. And the sticker would say something like, assembled or inspected for quality by Betty. The clothes at Artie's were all the items that Betty had rejected, okay? <laughs> And some of them were so flawed, they should have had their own sticker, and it would have said, assembled by Edna after one too many vodka tonics. <laughs> so they'd have holes in them. If you didn't inspect them before you bought them, you'd come home, you'd find out that the sleeves had been sewn in wrong, and you'd have to stand like this to make them fit. You know, it was really embarrassing to shop there. So little Miss Bossy Pants, I just wanted clothes with labels in them. But this wasn't the only thing about Artie's. So Everything wasn't flawed. Sometimes things were just so tacky and so hideous that Macy's and Strawbridge's and Wanamaker's wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. But they were dirt cheap at Artie's, so you bought them anyway, especially if you lived in a cheapskate family. And a case in point of this was a T-shirt my mom bought in 1973. It had an obscure vice president of the United States on it. If you remember Richard Nixon, he had a vice president, a guy by the name of Spiro T. Agnew. This guy had resigned in disgrace for cheating on his taxes. These are the good old days, right? When even the crooked politicians had a conscience. But he had resigned for cheating on his taxes, so this t-shirt was marked down to only 15 cents. So my mother, she hadn't voted for the man, and she doesn't cheat on her taxes, but she couldn't resist a 100% cotton t-shirt for 15 cents. So she bought that sucker, and she brought it home, and she wore it for years. And so I... I was a little Miss Bossy Pants about that, too, because I think, can't we just have normal clothes in this household? Everything about this is embarrassing. And when you went to shop at Artie's, the embarrassment didn't end with the flaws in the clothes or the tacky vice president t-shirts. 
Artists had this strict no returns policy, and because the things were flawed, you really had to try them on before you bought them. But the problem was that Artie's had no dressing rooms. <laughs> so my mother, she'd take a raincoat, she'd hold it up, and she'd say, Karen, drop your pants, try these on, nobody's watching. Okay? Years of therapy later, right? Now, I don't know if any of you have been to the Artie's in Glenside, Pennsylvania, but it had enormous plate glass windows. And it was right across the street from Glenside Weldon Elementary School where I went for the first 10 years of my life. So I don't know how many people saw me disrobing in public in Artie's, you know, stripping down to my homemade underpants, <laughs> trying clothes on. But it was pretty embarrassing, and I just wanted to shop in a regular store and have clothes with labels in them. So I vowed. I vowed that when I went to college and I got my first paycheck, I was going to buy clothes with labels in them. And the thing about Artie's, they had this bold slogan, Artie's is for smarties. And if that were true, I'd have gone to Harvard. I didn't go to Harvard. <laughs> but, but I went to college, and I, and I graduated, and I got my first paycheck, and I, uh, I cashed it, and I went to the Willow Grove Mall, and I bought myself a brand new suit. It was perfect. It, I paid full price. My mother rolls over in her grave. It had a big label in it. I can still see it to this day. It said Casper by ASL. It was a thing of beauty. On my way out of the mall, I stopped in Victoria's Secret, you know, just for the heck of it, to buy some underpants made in a factory. <laughs> and then the next day, I went into work, confident in the knowledge that if I took my blazer off at a staff meeting, nobody would judge me by my label or lack thereof. But here's the rub. I was only in work for five minutes when it felt like there was a cactus boring into the back of my neck. I, I had failed to develop calluses growing up. I mean, the people who make labels are some kind of sadists. They take this miniature bed of nails and they wrap it in poison ivy, and then they're like, let's stitch it in Karen's jacket. So I, here I am thinking, here I am, Miss Bossy Pants in this beautiful new like, like a boss suit with a big label. I last about five minutes, open my desk drawer, take out a pair of scissors, and cut that label out. <laughs> and on this day, I decided I wouldn't allow myself to be judged by a label anymore. I decided to just embrace my family's cheapness. And this paid off because years later, I went on a blind date with a guy, found out he had grown up not far from me, and the two of us bonded over the fact that we had both disro disrobed in public at Artie's. I wound up marrying that little flasher. <laughs> I'm going to guarantee you he is the best bargain that ever walked out of that store. So what did little Miss Bossy Pants learn from this? I learned that I could spend a lot of money on expensive clothes to impress other people, only to be miserable myself. Or I could feel like a million bucks in a cotton vintage t-shirt that reminds me how much I love my frugal mother.